Yumsuzlukken en zekli türlü yasanı olsam olsam. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Welcome aboard Airbus 320. See you on the test. Very good to meet you from Stockholm and Arlanda Airport. I do apologize for being late uh, here in Ireland. That was caused by previous weather in uh, Scandinavia in Stockholm area. For the first time this year, or this season, uh, got snow. Nevertheless, we will do the uh, very best to speed up next weather at the destination. It is minus two degrees, snow on the ground, and it's all the cash. I just got to get this one thing and then and we'll be good to go. All right. Now we can begin. So how long have you been together? <laughs> okay, so I'm Braden and this, this is my wife, Kaylin. What you are about to watch is the story of how we found ourselves in Finland running around trying to capture one of our dream shots, the Northern Lights. Before we tell you this story, we've got to go back to the beginning and just show you how long this art form has been in our lives. We have to take you all the way back to the start of our relationship almost 14 years ago. together when we were very young, 15 years old, and I guess I'm just on here to talk about the history of like photography and videography in our relationship and um, the passion that we both have for this art. When me and Caitlin got together, when we were teenagers, uh, I had such a heavy focus on, on video and on filming my friends and motorbikes and doing all that stuff. But Caitlin was so into photography at that time. It's like my teenage years, photography started to really grow in my life. I did like a 
body of art for my year 12 HSC final, um, all based around photography. So I was really passionate about photography through all of my teenage years um, and I really, I wasn't really touching on video until um, we started travelling. Uh, the first trip I ever did, we went to Bali. Uh, it was me, Caitlin, Damo and Taylor and we took the GoPro. Yeah, Braden had his little GoPro and he filmed our whole trip and we put like this really <laughs> lame video together of our trip on a GoPro and like I love those videos still to this day. I think they're so good. I think that was when Caitlin realised how significant footage was and capturing those memories. When I watched those videos back, I was like, wow, I love this. Like I love capturing moments in time in video. It just you get to relive it so much more than just a photo. From there we went to New Zealand, filmed all of that, come home. And we're like, nah, like this isn't a phase. Like this is something that we're both into, hey. And it just, I guess it started from there because... We went on a three week trip. We went through New York and then up into Canada. We did like a little slow-mo highlight reel of like our time there. Probably proposed to me. Alright, so on the 28th of September, 2019, uh, I got to marry my longest friend. We'd been together for 12 years at that point. Yeah, that was like a really beautiful day, hey? Like, I couldn't have asked for a better day. We were surrounded by friends and family for three days. It was like the absolute best send-off we could have had. Because Caitlin, in her infinite wisdom, had booked us this five-month trip, leaving literally like the day after the wedding. So there was, there was no rest for the wicked. Like, we just packed up the venue and we were off. And that's realistically where this whole saga began. So this is how we get around on um, <laughs> our property now. Because it's pretty big. Shake it, girl. Check the wheels. So we're going to take you for a cruise around the property. Welcome to Caitlin and Brayden's wedding. Oh my god. What do I do? We're in our... Wedding by new house. So they can go be put back over there. No. Jeez, I'm not very good at this. How heavy is it? I'm a little bit worried.
go out in any context. We got married yesterday. Very hungover. Oh! So after our wedding, uh, we went down to Sydney um, on the 1st of October 2019 um, and jetted off on our four and a half month honeymoon. The first leg of our trip was Japan. We were actually planning on visiting 11 countries, but we ended up visiting 12. Um, but country number one was Japan. first and then went into Turkey. If you've never been to Turkey, I would highly recommend it. That place is incredible, hey? The balloons, everything about it. Like, one of the best places I have ever been. And then we went to some awesome cities in Europe, so Amsterdam, Paris. I'd never been to Paris, Caitlin had. So pretty much everywhere we went in Paris, Caitlin had already been. But um, yeah, it was just nice to do it again with her. One of the, like, there was a lot of places that we went to on this trip for, like, bucket list destinations and stuff like that. Like, we were heading, like, to so many places, like Cappadocia, then we were heading to, like, you know, the Eiffel Tower, we were going to go Dunluce Castle, Pyramids of Giza, like, yeah, whilst all these landmarks hold, like, a significant level of, of difficulty in trying to capture them the best that you can creatively. The one that, like, for the most part, intrigued me the most was the uh, the Northern Lights because that's that's not only like just in and of itself hard to see but it's hard to capture as a photographer.
So it inherently held like this level of challenge to both me and Caitlin to capture it the best that we could. And it coincidentally was at the halfway point in our trip, which sort of worked out really well for us because like by the time we got there, we were kind of, well, we thought we were beat. <laughs> but it turns out like the this journey was only just beginning. Um, yeah, it all kicked off in Ireland, man. I remember uh, Glendalough Lake quite well. Standing there talking about how like we were gonna, we were gonna go for it. out this place. This is incredible. This is Glendalough Upper Lake in Wicklow National Park I believe and we are blown away like we've seen some pretty beautiful places in our in our time but this is up there. We are so in love and it's just so peaceful and tranquil. So currently we find ourselves in a position where we're actually heading to Finland to capture the northern lights. Definitely Lake Glendalough when we decided we were really gonna we were gonna go ham for it, hey. We were gonna try our best to capture it. We flew out of Dublin, which by the way we have incredibly fond memories from Dublin. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Welcome aboard Airbus 320. Seo, old classic. British order ready for departure from Stockholm and Arlanda Airport. From the cockpit, cabin, Captain, I do apologize for us being late uh, here in Ireland. That was caused by previous weather. In Landed in Sweden Germany. for a bit, saw the sunset in Sweden. I would probably say the sunset in Sweden is. Probably one of the best ones I've ever seen in my life. It was just from an airport, but like it was, it was crazy good. That's what I was talking about. Anyway, immigration. So from Stockholm to Helsinki, we caught like a really little plane. Like it wasn't a big full size plane. It was like only two little seats on each side of the plane in the aisle. So it was like a really small plane. I guess because it was just flying quite a small distance. Like I think it was only a half an hour flight or a 45 minute flight. We made it to Helsinki. So we've got to find a SIM card and our bags. And then head to our Airbnb. It's raining, it's dark. But I like it. We took forever finding our Airbnb. Like it was, we had to pick up the key from some weird kiosk. Anyway, our night in Helsinki was kind of ruined by that, but it was beautiful because it was snowing and we were stuck in a snowstorm running around Helsinki with our huge bags. Beautiful snow in Helsinki. Like it was so thick, just big fat chunks of snow falling. Like there was like legit 30 centimetres of snow across like every car in Helsinki. Like you just walk past the car and go and just smash it off the top. So, yeah, it was safe to say that when we finally got to our Airbnb, we just both passed out. Actually, I believe we just went, we dropped off our bags and we went around the corner and had unlimited sushi, remember that? 
yeah, it was all you can eat sushi. And Jesus Christ, we ate so much sushi. Oh, we went all through Japan. I think I had sushi like twice. And the, the sushi in Helsinki was better. So across, across all of our trips, the number one de uh, common denominator we've, we've factored into to our travels is that the best travels that we've had uh, when you've got your own mode of transport. So when like the, the, the destination that you're heading to, the means and by which that you get there are completely up to you. So like if you've got a car or a scooter or any like, you know, push bike, whatever you're doing, like if you're going from A to B and it's in your control, that's when you're going to have the best travel. So we were supposed to drive from Helsinki all the way to Lapish, Finland in the north. So basically from the bottom to the top of this country. Like there's obviously a little bit above Levi, but for the most part from the bottom to the top. And uh, we only had like three hours of light. So we were seeing like absolutely nothing of the countryside. <laughs> so uh, we picked our car up this morning at uh, Helsinki Airport. And we're currently driving massive slog up to Levi, which is in Lapland. At that time of year in December, Finland only has three hours of daylight. So we were a little bit nervous because we weren't sure what the conditions of the roads were gonna be. Um, obviously we're not that used to driving in alpine, like um, snowy conditions. Conditions on the road are okay. There's like two lanes for tire marks and then the rest is ice. So we arrived in Levi. Uh, from what Caitlin tells me, it was like 1 a.m. Very late, like 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. We made it. That was a long slog. That was like 14 hours. But we're here and it's pretty yeah. and snowy. So after driving for a solid 12 to 13 hours, we arrive in Levy at about 1 or 2 a.m. And we checked into our Airbnb, which was this beautiful log cabin. We had it all to ourselves. We just found the nearest bed and see you, see you tomorrow. This is it. Oh, that's right, I had to order, order linen. We have to make our bed. Yay. Yay. All right, good night. Good morning. It's a blizzard outside. Okay, it's putting the boots on. What are we doing today? I don't really know. So we woke up the next day after a bit of a sleep in and we knew that we were okay to sleep in because we knew the sun wasn't gonna rise until pretty late up there. But our first day was basically just our scout day and we wanted to check, you know, the light times and whatnot. So we worked out that from 10.30 a.m. until 1.30 p.m. was sunrise. Basically the sun doesn't fully rise, it just sort of bounces over the horizon. So you get three hours of this really beautiful soft pastel light and then the rest of the time is dark. We'll go get some groceries and some food and stock up. We've got like another two hours of light. You thought. What we're dealing with, man. Very nice. Let's go and do it. Whatever it is. So, for as much as I wanted to shoot the Northern Lights, Caitlin wanted to shoot this Dr. Seuss shot up in the mountains. A big reason I wanted to go to Finland was because of the funny Lapish trees. So I don't know if you've seen photos, but in, in Finland, the snow is so like puffy and soft that when it lands on the trees, the trees look like really funny. So it kind of looks like Dr. Seuss book. And because you couple the Dr. Seuss with like a peach sky, because there's like no sun and you've got like perfect Caitlin shot sun. And I really wanted to see them and I've seen so many photos of people like in fields of them and you know, the sky is pink in the background because you never get like a proper sunrise. It's just always this beautiful pastel sky. 
So I was determined to find a spot. Come on then. Dad's whole job. I'm not getting out till you're ready. I'm ready. May not hear you go. I don't know if anyone else has had this problem, but it's pretty impossible to find information online about where to go in Levi. To see the funny trees. To see, she wants to see these funny trees, but they're just, they're just trees with snow on them. And we decided to try our luck up on Levy Ski Resort. So we basically just tried to drive up to the highest point possible because that's where obviously the most snowfall is. And we, we pull over at this car park and we decide to go walking. And we're walking, 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 and we look, like we're walking along the road, and we look up to our left at the ski resort. It's our first day in Levi Lapland. Uh, it's two o'clock in the afternoon, we had to sleep in because of our huge night last night of driving. Um, as you can see, the sun has already set and it's two o'clock. But we've driven to the summit of Levi Mountain, and we've parked our car, I'm going to walk up to this viewpoint of all these beautiful trees. We can see the lake in the background and these pink clouds and sky. It's so beautiful here. And there was just a, a pathway that we could walk on that was obviously snow ploughed, like cars couldn't access it. It was just by foot. So we're like, oh my gosh, we're literally like walking on this ski resort right now. So we're we start walking on this run. Kate's going out to get a gram shot. Why did we come to Finland and not bring our snow clothes? So pretty. This is like the best clip ever. You look so elegant. <laughs> Around us are just trees everywhere. These funny, lapish trees. Ready? Yeah. I'm ready. Oh. <laughs> oh, you have no idea how satisfying that was. Oh my god. <laughs> that didn't look too bad. Was it fun? <laughs> <laughs> so emotional because I, I, I didn't think I would ever see it. It was one of those places I just thought, oh, I'll never be able to go there. That, that's just a dream that I'll never be able to accomplish. And when we were driving up the mountain and I started well, getting higher and higher and higher and these trees with the snow were just becoming thicker and thicker and I was like, oh my gosh, we're here. I'm seeing it. I'm seeing this with my own eyes. I'm in Finland. I am in Finland. Like, how crazy is that? That's, it hit me really hard and I was super emotional because it was beautiful. It was one of the best days of my life. Aurora Borealis hunting. That was one of, one of the greatest challenges we've had, for sure. So much confusion around how we were gonna actually do it. Cause we didn't, like, I don't know if it was naive, but like flying in there, I just thought, oh, it would just be simple. We'll just find some lake and just pull up there and, uh, and just pop the shots off. Like it won't be that hard. But what you don't think about is uh, flying in there and driving up and then you realize you can't just you can't just pull up to a lake because the snowfall is so thick 
you'll have like half a meter of snow right up to the edge of the water. So you can't just pull up at any random lake. Like you need to like find somewhere that the council has been gracious enough to like level out and say this is this is a spot that you can park. And even if they do that, like you have that much snowfall overnight, if you're in anything but a four wheel drive, like if you're in a small like SUV or a Mazda 3 or something, you know, of that size, like a hatchback, like you're at real risk of getting bogged. Like there's no, there was no real way around it. Like if we, if we were gonna stop, we had to be sure that we could get out of there. Like that was a problem that we always were coming across because we, we didn't, every time we stopped, we were like, are we gonna be able to get out of here or, or what's, gonna, what's gonna happen here, right? So we found this website that told us it had like times and it had a map. And so the map had this green like aura hovering over the northern part of the world. So over like Scandinavia, Canada, Greenland was the northern lights, it was hovering. So like you could see where the Aurora Borealis was mo like strongest in the world. Um, unfortunately, the strongest was in Canada, <laughs> but we could sort of see at points when the Aurora Borealis was going to hit where we were on this on this live map, and it also had times, like ratings of when the Aurora Borealis was going to be the strongest. So I think three and four were strong and then one and two were like, maybe you probably won't see it. So we would always set out at times where the rating was like at a three or a four. So we would jump in our car at about 11 o'clock at night and we would drive north. And the further you get away from a town, the more likely you were to see the lights because you've got to get away from the light pollution so that you were in complete darkness. Okay, we are out Northern Light hunting tonight. It is 10.30 at night, which is within the range of optimal Northern Lights um, reveal time. Uh, we went up to the top of Levi Mountain, but it looked really foggy up there. So we decided to start driving north to this little town called, I don't know, it starts with M, Moino or something like that. And we've just pulled off um, on the side of the road and um, Braden's taking some long exposure shots because the night sky out here is really clear. We would sort of pull over into these little rest stops and um, set up our camera on the tripod because we couldn't see the Northern Lights with our eyes, um, but we knew that the camera might be able to see it. The thing that not many people tell you is like, because you just see all these photos of the Northern Lights and you just think, oh, I'm just gonna drive in there and see it and bang, there you go, see you later. But no, like for the most part, unless you get like a really good uh, Northern Lights experience, like if it's like, it's like a category five hovering above you, like then you'll probably see it with the naked eye. But outside of that, what you're probably gonna see looks like a really wispy dark cloud in the sky. Like you wouldn't know that that's the Northern Lights. Like if you were to point at it and go, yeah, there, there you go, bro, that's the Northern Lights. You'd be like, that's not, that's not green. Like you wouldn't know. Without photography, wouldn't have seen it. Because you can see this, this wispiness and dismiss it as a cloud. But if you take a long exposure shot, it like opens it up. Okay, we just took another long exposure shot and what that means is it just means that we're like keeping our camera shutter open for a long period of time so it lets in as much light as possible and it actually the photo shows a lot more light than what the human eye can see and it's a it's very um it's a common way for people to actually see the northern lights because they're faint in real life but the camera can really pick them up. And what I would do is is just put the, put the tripod down, put the camera on, and just shoot in all directions. Because obviously I couldn't see it. 
So I'll just shoot like all around. Caitlin obviously wouldn't want to get out because it's minus 30 and realistically who would want to get out? Like I was the only one there, pitch black. So we're pointing it at these trees because we sort of wanted the photo to have a bit of detail in it. And it was one of the greatest moments to, to turn around, to walk into the car to Kate, just all cash. She put her head to go. Oh, not too bad. It's a little bit of green in this one, eh? More green? <gasps> Heaps of green. Oh my God, we see more green. This is what we're seeing in our long, ex long exposure shots. Do you see that? Green. Green. You can't put the lens on. <laughs> <laughs> you see that? That is definitely green, right? Green. Yeah, we're definitely seeing. We're going to see the northern lights. Woo! <laughs> the photo was really nice, lit up of these trees with all the snow on it. But in the corner, you could just see it. You could just see this faint green light just in the corner and it was enough for us to be like that's it like they're out they're out tonight we we can do we can do this eh so we shove everything into the car and start driving in the direction of where that little bit of green was so we're driving 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 like speeding along trying to trying to see the northern lights and trying to find somewhere to pull over and i'm looking out the back of the car and I just see this streak like in the sky, this green streak. It was really faint. Yeah, I see it. Holy shit. It's so faint, but I can see it. Oh my God. Oh, you need to stop. Caitlin yells at me. She's like, they're there. They're there. They're behind us. They're, they're, they're on the left, just behind us where I can see them. And I was like, oh, we need to pull over. And then, 100 metres or so above, um, in front of us is a little blue peace sign. And we're like, hallelujah. I think you're, there's a break in the trees. Oh God, this might be perfect. This could be it. <gasps> it is. I see the northern light is so faint though. Pull up. Yeah, we made the call to pull into this rest stop and it just opened up like, like there's no trees. You could just see the wispiness there. I was like, I can get that, mate. And Braden sets up the camera and... And we just took another photo and it's freaking epic. It's like this green streak across the sky and we can see it, it's very faint. All right, we're about to check our five minute exposure. Oh, see, it's green. Oh my God. That is literally in front of us right now, but it's pitch black on the GH5. Yeah, we sort of stood there holding each other because we always said that if we ever saw the lights, we would we would take it in and we would we would let the camera do its thing and we would just stand there together and take the moment in. And that's what we did. We held each other and watched the lights. How would you describe the Northern Lights? Um, oh, we just see like a streak right now and it's sort of starting to get a little bit wispy in places, um, but it's not very bright for us right now. Like hopefully, um, like on another night we get like a brighter one but yeah it just kind of it reminds me of like um I don't know what it reminds me of like a the tail of like a shooting star or something like you've seen two of them as well yeah lots of shooting stars the photo was great but the thing with long exposures is they take time obviously it's inherent in the name so whilst it's taken the shot, I got to stand there and, uh, and hug my wife and just look at the Northern Lights. That was a really good, it was a really good experience. What, so are we, this is the end? 
So I guess we're just gonna finish this chapter off by saying this journey isn't over. Not by a long us. shot. We want to um, see it again. If anything, it's just sparked the desire in us to um, find them again and find them better this time. Yeah. We want to see the real Aurora, the dancing lights, the phoenix. Yeah, we're gonna yeah. we're gonna come back. Whether that's to Finland, to a different Scandinavian country, or if we just go back to good old Canada. But we gave ourselves a deadline of five days to, mm. to see these lights. But we're proud with what we come back with, to be honest. Like it's not, it's not my dream shot, but what we'll, we'll wrap this up with saying is, I don't think it ever could have been. Like if I'd gone there and shot like a whole Phoenix shot of the Northern Lights, still wouldn't be happy. Like you're never gonna be totally happy with everything that you got. You're never gonna be like, yep, snap, done, see you later. It's, it's a growing progress. You're always gonna get better. You're always gonna try and do better. Yeah, it's not often so, that you leave a place and you're like, done, done with that. Done. I'm never going back there again. <laughs> Sometimes you do, but then like it grows on you again later and you're like, oh, okay, I kind of want to go back. Japan. <laughs> Japan. <laughs> but what I, what I will say is that, yeah, we gave ourselves a deadline of five days and we came away with the best shot that we could with the equipment that we had and the time that we had. But uh, we had to leave because there, um, there was more things to see in the world. Thank you.